99% sure that I am actually in focus right now and that there will be no drastic changes in exposure. The quality of my videos lately has been kind of meh and this time I took the time to connect my camera to my laptop so I can focus the camera a bit easier. So thumbs up for that. So happy Friday! Thank you guys so much for all of your great input and feedback on my last Friday faves. Today I'm going to do my five favorite blushes. I think blushes got the most requests, plus blush happens to be my favorite beauty product, so I figured I would do that one next. If you guys watched my, I guess, declutter my blush declutter. I did it a quite a while ago, but I will link it below in case you are interested. I basically go through all of the blushes that I own and that are in my collection. It's really hard for me to part ways with blush because blush is really the first makeup category that I started hoarding and collecting. Regardless, I am going to share with you five of my favorite blushes. This was incredibly hard to do. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I know we're just talking about blushes, but picking five out of all of the blushes that I have was extremely hard because I have some really great blushes in my collection that I absolutely love. And it was just really difficult to pick five, but I managed to do it. With that said, I'm going to show you my five favorite ones. And again, some of the brushes that I really like to apply these blushes with. Hopefully I can get this as close to five minutes as possible. I feel like this intro is already three. So I have a penchant for higher end blushes. I don't have anything against drugstore blushes by any means, just the ones that I have here are, you know, classified as higher end. I'm going to start with the Clinique blush though. These are the Clinique Cheek Pops and this one is in Ginger Pop. I was really torn about whether to include Ginger Pop or Fig Pop because I have both and I really, really like both. But Ginger Pop was the first one that I picked up and, um, I really like it. These blushes are apparently slow baked. I'm not 100% sure how the process of creating them works, but they are quite a unique texture because they're technically a powder product, but they don't feel powdery on the skin. They almost feel like a cream, but they're not a cream. It's quite confusing, but the texture is amazing. They're so silky and smooth and easy to blend. This color is a coral pink. Just for fun, I'm gonna show you what it looks like compared to Fig Pop because honestly, both of these are amazing and they're really similar. These are what they look like together. This one is Ginger Pop. As you can see, it's more of a coral. And then this one is a Fig Pop and it has a little bit more of you know, a neutral undertone to it. But they look so beautiful on the cheeks and Ginger Pop just gives your cheeks a really beautiful glow. And I love this formulation and I love this color. Okay, this is the other blush that I have layered on top. This is from uh, Giorgio Armani. This is the Cheek Fabric Sheer Blush in number 509. Oh my gosh, this blush is amazing. It is a gorgeous, deep fuchsia color. I always grapple between the difference between fuchsia and magenta. I feel like magenta has a bit more red to it, whereas fuchsia has a bit more purple. So as you can see, it's kind of a cooler tone blush, more leaning towards purple than red. So I'm gonna go forward and say that this is a deep fuchsia blush. The thing I love about these blushes is that they are very pigmented, but they're so easy to blend and they do have, if you're familiar with the MAC Sheer Tone consistency, it's similar to that. Um, it's not sheer necessarily when you apply it because you can definitely go overboard with this, but they're just so effortless to blend in that it feels like you're just dealing with a sheer blush. It's really easy to apply, easy to blend. This blush in particular just gives you a gorgeous flush on the cheeks and it lasts all day long. So I had to mention this because this is one of my favorite blushes. NARS blushes are top shelf for sure. So this is one of my favorite blushes. I was going to mention NARS Orgasm because that is the only blush I ever finished in my lifetime, but I am going to mention a NARS blush because their formulation is really great. This is Luster, which is a very golden peach blush with a lot of gold shimmer. Now, don't be scared about the shimmer because even though there is a lot in this pan, 
it does not translate as overly glittery on the cheeks. It's actually a beautiful sun-kissed glowy luminous finish and this is my favorite blush in the summertime. This just complements sunshine beautifully, it complements summertime beautifully and it's a really great formulation. But let it be known that NARS Orgasm Blush was the first blush that I ever actually used up in its entirety and had to repurchase, which is really crazy. You guys know I am obsessed with the Hourglass Ambient Powders and I also really love the blush. If you watched my vlog a few months ago, maybe during the holiday season, you'll know that I actually had to pick up a new one because I dropped mine, it shattered, could not piece it back together, and even when I did, it was not it did not apply the way it used to. So I picked up another one. The only downside about these blushes is the fact that they are all different. So because of the swirling, how it comes in the pan is it's a combination of blush pigment and also the ambient powder, the original line. So the swirling in here, the veining is different in each pan. I actually don't notice too much of a difference in application. Uh, between this one and my previous one. It just is a really great uh, kind of neutral plum shade. If you like blushes like Tarte Exposed MAC Blush Baby, you'll like this blush because it just gives your skin a really beautiful glow, but because it's a neutral blush, it kind of gives you more of a sculpted look, and who doesn't want that? I gotta say my favorite thing about this blush, and a lot of the blushes that I'm mentioning, is just how effortless they are to apply. I don't want to be sitting at my makeup desk spending five minutes trying to buff out a product or all those harsh lines, even with a really pigmented blush. And every single one of the blushes that I'm going to mention are just so easy to blend that you don't have to do that. You don't have to sit there and be like, oh, is that too harsh of a line? Just, you know, they're really effortless to apply. The last blush I wanted to mention is from Burberry, uh, but this is the blush in Tangerine. If you've ever tried a Burberry blush before, you will be familiar with that finely milled, smooth, easy to blend texture because all of their blushes are like that. A lot of their blushes are made for a natural looking makeup look, which is what I like. They do have some more pigmented um, shades, but for the most part, they're all very neutral. They're all very subtle blush shades, which is right up my alley. That's what I prefer. So this is in Tangerine, like I said, and it is a beautiful kind of brownie peach color with a hint of a pink. So it's obviously not an orange blush as the name Tangerine would suggest. It's definitely more of a muted peach with a little bit of those other subtle undertones, but it actually looks really great on the skin. This is one of those blushes where it looks kind of blah in the pan, but when you actually apply it, it looks really great. I've never really quite understood swatches because it totally looks different on the hand than it does on the cheek, but these are the swatches of the blush. So at the top here, we have Burberry Tangerine. The bottom four from left to right would be Clinique Ginger Pop. This second one is obviously the Giorgio Armani number 509. Third one is NARS Luster, and then the last one is Hourglass Mood Exposure. And that is totally not what it looks like on the cheek. It looks so much more pink here, but on the cheek it looks a lot more neutral. Here's what they look like in a little bit of different lighting. So I'm just at the window. Yeah, I don't really think the swatches are doing them justice. There's something you gotta swatch for yourself. Before I go, I'm going to show you some of my favorite blush brushes. This one is a new favorite. I mentioned it in my bronzer video. This is the number 90 Pro Featherweight Complexion Brush. This is the perfect brush to use for the Clinique Cheek Pop because this brush just fits perfectly in the pan. And like I said, the Cheek Pop is not a cream, but it kind of feels like a cream, so this just blends it perfectly. These are synthetic bristles, so it just picks up the product really beautifully and blends it out really nicely. I also really like the classic um, paddle shape blush brush. So I have three here. This one is from Chanel. It's just the number four blush brush. As you can see, it's small. It has a shorter handle, which is nice if you have to get up really close to a mirror. And uh, it's just a classic paddle shape. This one is a great multitasking brush. This is from the Real Techniques. I know it as the multitasking brush, but it's a really great versatile brush. This came when I bought it in a travel kit collection from Real Techniques. And again, it's just a really easy to use paddle shape. 
I mentioned this one already too in my bronzer video. This is the number two Sonia Kashuk blush brush. It's just really easy to use on the cheek for applying blush. And also, these are just incredibly soft. Um, Sonia Kashuk tools, the ones with the black handle, are really great brushes. The last blush brush I wanted to mention is another one from Sonia Kashuk. This is the number 29. I think it's called the Pointed Powder Brush. This is my favorite. I absolutely love the teardrop dome shape for a blush brush. I don't know why, I discovered it a few years ago and I've just been obsessed with this shape. I particularly love this brush because I love the shape, I love the size, the quality is really nice, it's incredibly soft. I will say that this is a newer one. My older one in this style started to shed uncontrollably recently. Every single time I would go to use it, it would shed at least 15 hairs. So I just retired it and uh, I opened up my new one. But I love this for blush. It just feels really great on the skin and it applies product perfectly and it also allows you to blend it really easily. So that rounds out my five favorite blushes. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Like I said, I can talk about blushes non-stop for days probably. I never get tired of blush. I always find new blushes to pick up. So please let me know what your favorite blush is because I would love to know what your formulation is, you know, top shelf. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.